Have you ever run into high fees or signing failures when trying to move your Bitcoin? These issues can arise for several reasons, but a common cause for both of them is accumulating too many UTXOs. In today's video, we're going to take a closer look at this issue and how you can manage UTXOs to minimize these frustrations. This video is going to take you deeper on some advanced strategies for managing hardware wallets and signing transactions. If you don't know what UTXO means, we have a video that introduces this term. We highly recommend you check that one out before watching this one, and you can do so by checking out the card on your screen or clicking the link in the video description. UTXO is an acronym for Unspent Transaction Output. Each UTXO in your wallet exists as an individual chunk of data like a physical coin deposited into a piggy bank. In short, they represent the fundamental difference between depositing 0.9 Bitcoin into your wallet in one transaction and depositing 0.1 Bitcoin into your wallet nine times. Even though your wallet will show a total balance of 0.9 Bitcoin in either case, each deposit remains a separate entity and each of these entities is a UTXO. In this video, we'll cover in detail two problems that can arise from accumulating too many of these UTXOs in your wallet. First is signing failures. Some hardware wallets are unable to sign transactions involving too much data due to their limited memory. The second issue is high fees. Transaction fees are a huge consideration for people holding too many UTXOs because the cost to move your Bitcoin is dependent on the amount of data being processed. A sensible first priority is making sure your devices remain able to sign your transactions when you need to move your Bitcoin quickly. The current hardware wallet models from the most popular manufacturers can sign most transactions from typical users, but if you have a lot of UTXOs, the process could take several minutes to complete or may end up being unsuccessful. Luckily, as we head into the future, newer models of hardware wallets will likely be improved to handle more and more UTXOs. One thing to note here is that your best bet is always preventing too many UTXOs from accumulating in the first place, which we'll talk about towards the end of this video. But if you need to move your Bitcoin and are running into signing constraints, you can always try moving your Bitcoin in several smaller transactions. If you only send a portion of your UTXOs at a time, your device may have better luck handling the data and providing signatures. If you're someone who constantly accumulates Bitcoin, whether by mining or by repeatedly purchasing Bitcoin using a dollar cost averaging strategy, you can end up holding a very large number of UTXOs if you aren't careful. Having a lot of UTXOs can work against your accumulation because when it comes time to move the Bitcoin to a new address, you may discover that you have to pay a hefty price in transaction fees. We'll save the details of how Bitcoin transaction fees are calculated for another video, but the key thing to know is that fees are determined by the chosen cost per byte of data, as well as how many bytes of data your transaction will require. If you have many UTXOs to move, your transaction will contain more bytes than a typical transaction involving just a few UTXOs. If you need to move a lot of UTXOs to a new address, there is no way around paying a higher than normal fee. The most costly predicament to be in is if you have a lot of UTXOs that you need to move on short notice while the fee environment is extremely high. As you can see, regardless of the amount of Bitcoin you are moving, fees can vary by a staggering amount. If you have some Bitcoin in the form of 100 UTXOs and are forced to send it when fees are high, it might cost you 2,000 times more than if you sent the same amount when fee rates are low and in just the form of 5 UTXOs. In both of these cases, wallet maintenance is the key to saving you time and money. There are two main ways to maintain your UTXO count at a reasonably low level, controlling your deposit frequency and performing a UTXO consolidation. If you are someone who accumulates Bitcoin constantly and immediately sends the Bitcoin to your wallet, then you may be rapidly piling up UTXOs. It's wise to use various strategies to control your deposit frequency. If you routinely buy Bitcoin on an exchange, perhaps multiple times per week, consider sending it to self-custody in bulk once or twice per month. This way, you will end up with less than 25 new UTXOs per year. If you belong to a mining pool, you should be able to adjust your payout thresholds, changing the frequency with which earnings are sent to your wallet. If you raise the threshold, your earnings will be sent to self-custody less often, 
and you will accrue fewer UTXOs over time. If you already have a lot of UTXOs in your wallet, there's still a prudent move you can make to potentially reduce your future fees substantially. A UTXO consolidation can take some or all of your UTXOs and combine them so that you're left holding that amount of Bitcoin in just one UTXO. Conducting a UTXO consolidation is easy. Simply author a transaction containing UTXOs you wish to consolidate and send them back to yourself. For example, if you had nine UTXOs, you could bundle them up and send them to a new address generated by your wallet. At Unchained, we recommend that our clients start considering a consolidation transaction once they have 20 to 50 UTXOs in their multi-sig vaults. This recommendation is likely to reduce future costs for our clients while also ensuring that most hardware wallets can handle the data burden of a maximum withdrawal at any time. However, combining UTXOs can also have certain privacy implications, so consolidations aren't right for everyone at all times. We'll save the privacy details for a future video. And there you have it. We hope this explanation has helped you understand how accumulating UTXOs can impact your signing devices and fees, as well as how strategies like controlling deposit frequencies and UTXO consolidations can help. That's it for today. If you have any questions about UTXOs that we didn't cover, let us know in the comment section below. And if this guide was helpful, please share it online and like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.